First of all, thank you so much for being a part of this week's session with Scott. The response to the training has truly been amazing, and we've gotten email after email from you guys who are truly benefiting from this opportunity. You can just take a look at some of the responses below from the recap of people who have translated this education into real opportunity. While we love seeing all you guys in the room, we're very sorry for some of the issues that occurred in Omnovia today. The bottom line is that before this week began, we spent a lot of money upgrading our usage with this company to host several thousand traders at one time. And while things worked out very well earlier in the week and for the first hour of trading today, the tech issues that popped up have made it difficult. Because of that, we've posted a copy of the recap below so that you can get full benefit from the recap and the education. We're doing everything that we can to make this the absolute best experience for you possible, so we greatly appreciate you guys being so incredible and patient. As we are now over the halfway point of the trial, we've received lots of emails from people asking how they can get involved with Scott and his training. Before we got to that, we wanted to make sure that you saw Scott's live market analysis and education to make sure of three things. Number one, that he is the real deal. Number two, that his training had real benefit for you. And number three, that this is something you would be interested in as you seek to become a professional trader. While we love having thousands of traders in the room, we'd like to ask something of you before you log in tomorrow. We ask that you log in if you truly are interested in becoming a better trader and becoming a target trader. If you are truly interested in learning the techniques that Scott teaches and feel that he'd be a good fit for you longer term, we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow and Friday. This Friday, we'll open up a special opportunity to become an official part of Scott's program as a target trader. We have literally had 23,000 plus traders sign up for the videos and education provided throughout the week. In addition to that, another several thousand traders that have tuned in to the live sessions each day and then watched the recordings. Obviously, with the type of training and mentorship that Scott provides, we will not be able to come close to accommodating that number. If you're truly interested in becoming a target trader, we ask that you show up on Thursday and Friday. Access to the program will open up on Friday at 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Because of the limited number of people that Scott and his team can handle, compared to the 23,000 plus that have signed up for his education, we want to make sure that the people who are serious about joining have the first opportunity to do so. Because of that, we've created a guaranteed student list for you. While there's no obligation, being on this list will allow you to receive first notice once the program opens for enrollment. As always, we appreciate you taking the time to view the recap and ask that you leave a comment on how the education's been helpful to you after viewing the video. All right, so we're here at the session recap, and we're doing one of the things I want to do real quick before I finish this. Uh, I want to show you what we started when we were had to start this over. Uh, one of the reasons we wait for the break, hook, and go. I want to show you why you have to do it, so I can prove to you why you need to do this. All right. So we're gonna, this is the dollar yen. I've gone. I've, I've just got to sit on my on my desktop, and it's from from this side here all the way to this side over here is 22 hours of 10 minute car, charts. Uh, candles, excuse me, which means it's virtually a day of, ten, of, of candles, all right? So I'm going to go left to right, and we're going to see how many candles did not retrace upon themselves. There's one right here, and as we're working our way here, this one retraced back over here. Working our way up, that one didn't there, but it retraced over here, all right? So working our way up here like this, right over here, and that one retraced right there, this, or two, right there, all right? So we got one, two, uh, we got one, we got two so far. And this retraced over here. So, all right. this is the only one, and we're live right now. That's the one that's, that we're working on right now. You see that? All right. So, in 22 hours on the UJ, two candles did not retrace. All right. Which means a break, hook, and go. Everything has to, that's a retrace. A break, hook, and go. All right. Everybody see that? Now. Why would we make a strategy that says, if the candle just goes, I go jump on it, when out of only two candles out of 22 hours, it doesn't come back on itself? You see that? It doesn't make sense. It's not a good logical strategy not to wait for the break, hook, and go, folks. This is all there is to it. 
because the market overwhelmingly will retrace, the candle will retrace on itself. All right? So that's why you do it. All right? Pure and simple. All right. Let's, uh, let's do the session recap here for what we're looking for, okay? Initially, the, the two trades we're looking for here are the UJ break to the downside, and you can see right now we're, we're, we're looking for this trade down in here, right? And it's going the other way. See, don't take a trade until it's ready to go. It is not ready to go, right? So that's not ready to go, and we're looking for them to take the 101 out right here. It's got to take that out, break, hook, and go, and then we'll take that trade to the downside, all right? So that's one of the ones we're eminent looking for, and the trade is 120 pips altogether. All right, first part of the trade is a break, hook, and go here, down to here. When we break, hook, and go here, depending on what it does here, you may be able to get that, maybe. All right, but doubtful. If it pops up here, then you'll get it without a problem. Break, hook, and go below here, you double your position. We're looking for the 382 down here on the 99.94. Okay, so that's what that was. A, that was finishing off the trade setup we were looking for initially. All right, so let's do this. This is a session recap for the 5th of, uh, of uh, February. And we're, here's what we can do on the Euro. Now the Euro has not moved but 12 pips for the last three days. It's set, this is three days worth of work on the EU. So you can see why I don't like the EU. Nothing happening there, right? We're in a downtrend. We're looking for this trade right here. If it finally does break, it's in a bear flag. If it breaks, we're looking for 34.29, all right? And uh, that's about 60 pips away. All right, so if it breaks, you might want to trade it. I'm not trading it, but you guys may want to. Who knows? All right, the pound dollar. Uh, pound dollar has got a heck of a big bottom here. Right here, this 62, 65, 70 area is really, really difficult to break. All right, so the structure of the market says we're at the bottom of the trend here. It's done. All right, the problem they've got right now is what they're doing with the dollar. Okay, so let's go look at the dollar index and you'll see. What are they doing with the dollar? Nothing. They're just sitting there going sideways. It's doing nothing at all. So that means that the, the, that it becomes uh, almost directionless, all right? So it's what's happening here? It's going sideways just like the euro is, all right? But the structure of the market says we need to do a bounce, okay? So we've got a one, two, three long. We need to do a four, all right? And four really should be a long one. So what are we looking for? We're waiting for them to make the break up A and a B and a C. All right now, what may end up happening is A may go to the heart line. All right, A may go up to the heart line, which is an 80% probability. Then you get a little B down and a C all the way up to here. All right, if that happens, you got to wait to up here to sell it off of here. All right, you don't take a trade the opposite way. That's counter trend trading. You know, only 20% of the money is made that way, folks. 80% of the money is made with the trend. When can I counter trade? When you double and triple your account, go with the 80%. If you can't double and triple your account where the 80% of the money is made, how are you ever going to do it when only 20% of the money is made? Don't take on the additional risk when you don't have the education and the experience to know how to do that. All right. Uh, all right. So we're looking for a move at least up to the heart line, and we may get a sell off there to continue the trend. If we do, we want the trade. So if it goes back up to the heart line, and that's a big if, up to the heart line, and we want to sell it. So around 63.50, we start looking for a trade to the downside again, back down to 62.65. Right? Dollar CAD, nothing to do. We're stuck up in the top of the of the uh, trend up here. Nothing to do until we get a pullback. There's no pullback yet, so stay away from it. All right, dollar Swissy, all right, stuck inside a pennant. All right, when we get stuck inside a pennant, we do nothing. All right, all right we can't do anything because we don't have direction. Once we're in here. There's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. We need a clean break to the downside to sell it. That's what we prefer because we're in a downtrend. All right. What's the problem with it going? Well, the dollar index is going sideways. That's the problem. And since the dollar index is going sideways, what is the U.S. dollar swishy doing going sideways? All right. So when they resolve the U.S. dollar issue, then you'll see this move either to the downside. We'll be looking for a target down at 89.66. Or if we get a break, hook and go above the pennant, we'll be looking to come up here to the double top, which is up around uh, 91.30 so, right up in this area here, right? So it's either that one or that one, but there's no man's land in here. So walk away from it unless it breaks out. 
All right, dollar yen, we've already talked about this trade to the downside. Again, what's the problem? Dollar. Dollar is not moving. So what is this doing? It's not doing anything either. What's this doing? Dollar index is going sideways. So what is this doing? Going sideways. We're waiting for a sell down into this area. We've already talked about this, 120 pips to the downside. That will exceed its ATR by about 30 pips. So be aware of that, all right? So if we get the trade here, we're looking for the trade. We've already talked about this one, all right? So there we go. Aussie dollar. All right. Aussie dollar, we're looking for a continuation to the top. Again, dollar in it. That means it's going sideways. This is why you got to trade exotics, folks, because if the dollar goes sideways, there are no opportunities. And what happens to retail traders? They'll make an opportunity anyway. And then they realize, wonder why I didn't make any money today. I lost money today. Why? Well, the dollar, went, the dollar index went sideways. Uh, wait, well, I don't even watch the dollar index. Okay, that's your problem. Watch the dollar index. All right, here we are. Here's the opportunity right here to the upside. We had a reversal based on RBA early this week. Reverse the fundamental of the market. We're now trying to move to the upside. The, the trend is up here. All right, so we've got lots of opportunity up to here. You can trade the Aussie all day as long as, uh, because the next session is the, single, is the Sydney market. All right, so we can trade it. We don't have to wait two, three markets for it to, to move. So break across this top about uh, 89.30 area. You're going to be interested in going up to 89.65, 35 pips there. A break of this, you're going up to 89.96. Let's just call it 9,000. All right. So those are the two opportunities there. Should they happen? One here, 89.30, and the other one is above 89.65. All right. So we'll look for that tomorrow. See what happens. All right. So that's what you're looking for later today. All right. Euro yen, all right? Euro yen is going sideways because the dollar yen is going sideways, all right? Dollar yen is going sideways, euro yen is going sideways, all right? What are we looking for? We're looking for the continuation to the downside. Right now, what we have is a big sideways move, as you can see. Well, that means that, that that's called the pole. Whatever you did going into the pole is what you're going to do coming out of the pole. So we can see this is a very viable target right down here because this is what we did going into the pole. So coming out of the pole is right here, all right? Advanced traders will trade it at the top of the pole for the bottom of the pole, all right? And then double your position below 136.50, right? So that's where it is, and our target is 135.75, so about 75 pips there. All right, so we're going to pull this up here. Uh, you get a turn up here around 30, 137.40 area to the downside. You take a position there. When you break out of the bottom, you're going to take a position there, double your position there. Always remember you got to double your position, all right? None of this other stuff. Now, I'm going to put this on as a bear flag. Even though we can see it's a pole, you can also see that it could very well be a small little bear flag. So we're going to mark it as a bear flag. And we're, oh, sorry. I don't want to do that. Mark it as a bear flag. That, that means we can trade it on the break here. All right. So there we go. All right. So we'll trade it at the top of the bear flag, and we'll also trade it on the breakout of the bear flag. Whatever happens. And our target is 135.79. So let's pull this up here. Break of the bear flag. Right. Pound yen. All right. Pound yen still got room to the downside. We made some very good money on the pound yen uh, during the night. During the night. By the way, in the EJ last night, we, uh, the average trader made 50 pips. All right. So uh, and the uh, uh, Aussie was a zero trade because it just it went up 20 pips and then came back. So it ended up being a, a zero trade. Okay. All right. So on the pound, uh, but on the uh, on the pound also we uh, we. Uh, we did not have any trades there, but on the GJ, we uh, we made uh, roughly 54 pips on the GJ, All right, so not bad uh, to the downside. And we're looking at continuation. That's the move we had there. We're looking for the continuation down to 163.85. All right, so there's the trade to the downside. We'll see what happens. All right, so we're going to adjust this because they've adjusted it. All right, so the little the the, the little single line trend lines running like that. So now you can see it's really a channel to the downside. All right, see that? This is a channel down to here, up to here, down to here, up to here. What's next? Down to here. Everybody see it? That's what it is. So there's your opportunity. Big opportunity. Don't miss that opportunity on the GJ. All right. All right. Uh, New Zealand dollar. All right. Uh, on the New Zealand dollar, uh, we're waiting to see. Also, we're still stuck inside a sideways move here. Also, take it up to the 240, and you can see what it is. We're in a downtrend. All right, so the danger here is, although we're in a downtrend, we're looking for, this might be an A, a B, and a C for a breakout. Uh, Isn't it 
Okay, never mind. All right, sorry. All right, uh, so we're looking for an ABC and a breakout here. Now, that may not happen, in which case, if it takes this support out, then we're looking for this big trade to the downside, and do not miss this big trade to the downside. All these targets have been taken out all the way down. We're looking at doing a double bottom if it should happen, all right? So that's the key, right down to here. All right. All right, that's uh, New Zealand. Let's go over to the exotics. Let's first off start with silver. And uh, with silver here, uh, we we've, we've took out our first target. This is exactly what we said yesterday. If it breaks to the north, we're coming up this trend line at 2002. And what did it do? Went to the trend line. The next target was 2033. It got as high as 2030, 26. So missed that target by only eight pips, folks. That's why we're target traders. We know where they're trying to go, right? Can we get the trade? That's up to you, right? So what are we doing now? We're waiting for a continuation, and the trade is up to 2033 again. All right. And Aussie yen, okay, Aussie yen, all right. And we're waiting to see if we get a uh, a bounce up to the top of the trend wall here. Let me take this off right here. In fact, let me take both these off so it doesn't confuse us anymore. All right. So we can see right now that what we got in reality is a, in the big picture is a downtrend, but in the in the, the the small picture, it's trading in a box right here, right? So when it makes it up to the top here, right here, it's got to make a decision. If it's going to trend to the upside, it breaks out and we get a trend started like this, right? If it doesn't and it respects that and breaks to the downside, that means we got to trade all the way back down to the bottom here. So what do you got to do? You got to wait for it to tell you what it's doing. Wait. The hardest trade for a retail trader in the world is a wait trade. That's what you got to do, folks. Sorry. All right, Euro pound. Uh, Euro pound, we're waiting to see if we get a breakout to the north here. And uh, so far, nothing's happening. All right, it's testing this breakout, testing this breakout. And we're looking for that move right there. Will it happen? I don't know. It's late in the session. We did test. We're out of the pennant here. We're out of the pennant. And we're sitting out here right on top of it. We're at 8,300. Uh, if we get the move during the day, you know, the rest of the night, we're looking at 83.50, 57 area right there. About 50 pips in that trade. Remember, it pays 66% more money, uh, or 63% more money than the euro. All right, continuing on here, and we've got a euro Aussie, and the euro Aussie, we made a, a pretty good money on the euro Aussie during the night, and uh, it was, a, you know, the little trade for most people was about 38 pips was the average trader made, 38 pips. But we're now trading in a sideways movement right, right in here, like you can see here. So from the top, you can trade it down to the bottom here and a break hook and go here. We're looking for this first target, which is at 5071 from 5123, which has already been taken out. Let me dash this all right, so we know it's no longer a target. It's just a barrier. Now, all right, it has been a target, and they took it out to the pip twice. All right? This is why we're target traders. We know where they're going to go. We know how to do it. Yes, you got to put lines in your chart. But that chart is really busy, man. I was really, really busy. That's like telling Mozart to take some notes off of his chart, off of his uh, score. Uh, you got too many notes on here, man. Uh, so anyway, that's what we got. Sideways movement. We got a pole. All right. The pole means that whatever it took to get into the sideways movement is it's going to do on the way out. So where is that? That's down here. So the overall target for this trade is 49.20, folks. We're at 51.87. So you're looking at a huge, huge opportunity down to here. Break here. Trade one is here. Trade two is here. Trade three is here. All right. Very simple to see it. Three wide open spaces. Trade to three wide open spaces. How do you know they're wide open spaces? Because you got a line here. You found the line that was the barrier. Therefore, the space between the two lines is the only place you can trade as a retail trader. The only place you can trade, right? Why is this? I don't know why it's so hard for people to get in their head because they want it simple. It is simple. It is simple, I should say. It's 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 complex, but it's not complicated. All right. All right. So that's the Euro Aussie. All right. Next one, CAD yen. All right. We are really really interested in this trade if it'll break. And as you can see, they have already bounced off that line again. We're looking for the break out of this wedge. We got to get out of this wedge, all right? When we get out of the wedge, we're in a downtrend, we're looking for that first trade to here, right? Now, this could very well be a head and shoulders, which is why they're doing this, in which case it could easily bounce out here, right? If it bounces out of here, there's nothing for you to do. Why? You're in a downtrend. That's why. So, you got to wait. Right? If you get to sell, you've got a huge, huge opportunity here, all the way down to here. 
nothing here to stop this thing. We'll need to put some fibs in here, so let me do that real quick. How do we do that? We go down to the 60-minute chart. We find a swing low, swing high in here that will give us extensions down in the area we're anticipating going trading into. There's a swing high, swing low. That gives us these fibs right here. Check the fibs to make sure that they know where they are. They knew where the 786 is. They knew where the 50 was. They knew where the 382 was. So, yes, that means they know where the 270 is and the 618 is down here. So how do we trade this? All right. We take the break here, hook and go here. There's trade one. Break, hook, and go here. There's trade two. When we get to the 270, we move the stops on all these down to here. All right. Once we break, hook, and go here, we move the, we trade again to here, and we move our stop down to here. All right. As we approach this line here, we're going to move our stop at least halfway, if not closer, and hang in, and maybe we'll get to here. It's the fibs that give you where you move the stop. You don't move the stop like, I think I ought to move my stop, man. That's not what you do. Bankers don't do that. Bankers move stops. Bankers do things they do on mathematical numbers. Your job is to find the mathematical numbers, all right, and visually see it. So it's a great opportunity there on the CAD, the end of the downside. Really looking forward to that trade myself. All right. Pound chief. Uh, pound chief, we're out of here. We did make some money on the pound chief during the night. And uh, a few pips. Uh, how many did we make? Oh, by the way, that GJ, we made 60 pips. I forgot to tell you that. Right. Uh, pound chief, where is it? Oh, I guess we didn't make it. No, nobody made it. We had only two traders make it. That was why we didn't do it. Okay. So we're still sitting here flopping around with a sideways move here. All right. Again, that's called the pole. So whatever we did get into it, what we're going to do coming out. So this becomes a target at 45.47. That's the area we're looking for, 45, 47, as long as it stays below this trend, all right? The fact that it's flopping around here means that it may actually be a false breakout and trying to break back into the trend and go up to here. So we'll wait and see if that happens. If it does happen, you're going to trade it up to 49.67, just like we said yesterday. And like we said yesterday, if it comes up here and doesn't do it and sells to the bottom, you want to trade it down here. Unfortunately, everybody didn't hear that. Only two traders made that trade. Right. So right now we're looking for either the same trade if we come back up, back down to here, and a break of this line, we're looking for a trade down to here. Right. Pretty simple to see that. And, uh, so the overall target to the downside is 45.47. All right. All right, over to the Euro Aussie. And uh, on the Euro Aussie, um, we uh, had a big trade during the night, and we also had another one down here. And I forgot to, uh, to take the number for that, but it's not going to matter. We made so many pips last night. Who cares? Uh, we did make money on that trade right there. Most likely, uh, I can't remember what it was. I forgot to write it down. So we're, look at we're trading in the bot in this little uh, little area here. A move up to here would be nice because that would give us the next sell down to here. All right, so just trade trade the uh, the uh, channel. It's working. So that means up to the top, we'll take it to the downside. What if it turns here? You still got plenty of room to trade there. So you can trade it. It may not be able to break that 8200 as you can see. Right. Or 8299. So it's actually 8300. May not be able to break that to the upside. It may turn to the downside. We're looking to go down to 8201. Right. So it's a 100 pip trade in there, folks. Don't miss that 100 pip trade. Nice. All right. Euro New Zealand. All right. We're very interested in this trade. We're interested in it all morning trying to get it to happen. Now, listen, folks. I can't make a trade work. I can't make the market move. This is the trade. Did it move in the New York? No. All right. There was no trade. Can I, can I help you with that? No, there is no trade. And a lot of you are saying, man, I want to be in a trade room where we're making lots of trades. No, you don't. You don't want to be in a trade room that you're making lots of trades because there are only one or two opportunities per session. That's it, folks. If you're in an area making lots of trades, they're going to take your money. Not the trade room. The market's going to take it. There aren't that many opportunities. But you've got to maximize the one when you get it. So we're looking at a break above 65.23. We're at about 65.30. We're going up to 66.30. So exactly 100 pips in here. If we can take the 65.30 out. Right now she's just flopping down around here. So what does that mean? This may be a breakout. That's a sideways movement that they can't get it going north. That means we got a pull. That means this target down here, if it breaks to the downside, we'll go down to 62.44. The uh, ATR of the Euro New Zealand is 163 pips. So it can do a pretty good run at that number, right? So don't miss them. Whichever way they decide to do it, it's there for you, right? Pound New Zealand, right? Pound New Zealand also work in a channel, right? So Pound New Zealand during the night, uh, it, uh, it didn't go anywhere, so we're waiting now for up to the top of the channel. The key question is now, will this be an A, B, C, which hasn't happened yet, right? Or is this going to break here 
and go to the downside, all right? I would love to see the downside move, all right? But I'm open to the upside move because it may need to be ch uh, to uh, change direction here, all right? I don't care which one it does. So what do I do? If I'm above 9,900, I'm going to be a buyer up to 99.68. If it breaks this bottom down below 98.50, I'm going to be a seller down to 97.60 area right down here, all right? So either one of those trades I am interested in, all right? So let me uh, take this down to here, and then we bring this up to here and flip it around. All right, so there we go. All right, New Zealand yen. All right, New Zealand yen uh, is, uh, uh, we're waiting to see if we get a B, a C, uh, an A, B, C up to the top. There's an A, a B. We're waiting for the C up to here. When we get here, if it's going to continue, it's going to break out. We're going to go up into this consolidation area right in here, all right? But we're hopefully it'll hold, the trend will hold, and we'll get this opportunity right here. So if we sell down to here, that'll be an awesome opportunity, all right? So 82.90, below 82.90, we're headed down to 81.36. And finally, the last currency that we, we look at, and remember, we don't trade all these currencies. We trade the ones that are going to move. We watch 19, and we end up trading one or two. All right, so get that through your head. Don't be thinking, I got to trade 19 currencies. You don't trade 19 currencies. You have 19 currencies, so you got plenty of opportunity in the Asian session. We got plenty of Asian currencies. You got plenty of opportunities in the London session. We got plenty of those. And then you get the live session here in the New York. And by the way, the New York session is the hardest market to trade. If you want to learn to trade, you learn in, the, in the, the hardest market, which is the New York market. All right, and and then the rest of them are easy. All right. Uh, I can see something here I want you to see. We have equilibrium running right through here. Right? There's equilibrium right there. So we're above equilibrium, so we're looking to go above. All right? So uh, this was a trade from yesterday, the pullback and a bounce. And those who made that trade, uh, Aussie Chief, uh, last night, Aussie Chief, what did they make on that? Aussie, uh, it was uh, on average, uh, let's see, looks like 35 pips. All right? So 35 pips on that was what the traders made. All right? So you can see we're in an ascending wedge all right? now. See, if you didn't draw that, you wouldn't see the ascending wedge. An ascending wedge is bullish for the currency. So above 8,100, not anywhere else. We're halfway and we're in no man's land here. Above 8,100, we're looking at a move at least 8,130. You've got a double top up here. You get up that far. All right? So how do we figure out where we go in this area right here? Very simple. You go down to the 60-minute chart. You find a swing low, swing high down here that will give you targets up here. So we got a swing low, swing high, which is right here. Swing low, swing high. And now we've got targets. We've got confirmation of the uh, 8130 right here. So this is the overall target, the 1270 up here at 8177. So a break above 8100. Trade number one is right here. Break hook and go to here. Break hook and go above 8132. Double your position up here to 8150. Move your stop. And then if you get a break hook and go above here, you only got 27 pips. I wouldn't make that trade. Uh, I would continue the trade I've got up to the 1270 fib, and then I move my stop tight right there. All right, folks, that's what I see. Sorry for the uh, technical problems this morning. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, they'll get those resolved by tomorrow, and uh, we'll see all of you tomorrow morning. Have a great day, and uh, don't forget that later today, this session recap will be posted here. Okay, so everybody said, I didn't get that. No, you don't get it. You come here and get it. All right, be a trader. Go get the information. All right, all right, everybody. We will see you later. Have a great day. Yes, RD, I will. Awesome, everybody. Glad it's helping you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, oh, yeah, we got a funny tomorrow. <laughs>